Samsung, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. 108 megapixels in a smartphone is just dumb. But why, I hear you ask, why would more megapixels ever be a bad thing? Well, to understand why, we need to talk about the size of our pixels. So as you probably know already, a digital camera sensor is essentially just an array of individual pixels that can independently collect light for the camera to produce a high resolution digital image. If we keep the size of our overall sensor constant, then the more pixels we add, the smaller each one will have to be. But why would that matter? Well, the larger a pixel's surface area, the more light it'll be able to collect during each frame. So if we cut the size of each pixel in half, that will make our image darker because each pixel is collecting less light during a given frame. Now, a wide variety of factors influence exposure. Shutter speed, aperture, focal length, etc. But the one we care about right now is the ISO or light sensitivity of our camera. A higher light sensitivity means the camera will be able to achieve a brighter exposure with the same amount of light. Now, we can actually control the light sensitivity by using an amplifier built into our camera. This is what the ISO setting controls. But, while using the amplifier to boost the signal, will increase our light sensitivity, it'll also introduce more ugly electronic noise into our image. Since noise doesn't look good, we want to achieve an acceptable exposure while boosting our image as little as possible. This is where the size of our pixels becomes relevant. As I said before, larger pixels will collect more light and therefore increase our light sensitivity. If our pixels are naturally more sensitive, the amplifier doesn't have to do as much work, so we'll be able to have less noise in our image at a given sensitivity level. Let's look at an example. Here I have two cameras in the same low light environment. On the left is a Sony a6400, where each pixel is about 15 square micrometers. And on the right is a GoPro Hero 8, where each pixel is about 2.37 square micrometers. Because the GoPro's pixels are much smaller, they're collecting much less light during each frame. In order to compensate for this, the GoPro's amplifier has to boost the signal off of the sensor quite a bit in order to achieve a decent exposure. In the process of boosting the signal though, it's also introducing a lot of noise into our image. It's worth noting that the ISO settings on these cameras are actually identical. The ISO simply describes how sensitive the camera is to light. Depending on how naturally light sensitive the camera is, the amplifier might have to do more or less work in order to achieve that level of light sensitivity. This is what makes some cameras better than others for shooting in low light situations. Cameras with larger pixels will naturally collect more light, so they can shoot at much higher sensitivities without introducing too much noise. Conversely, cameras with small pixels quickly become a noisy mess in low light scenarios because the amplifier is having to do all the work. And this finally brings us back to the 100 megapixel smartphone camera. The reason why this isn't a good idea is because of the sensitivity problem. Smartphones by necessity have very tiny sensors inside, so cramming 100 megapixels into such a small space means every pixel will have to be incredibly tiny and it won't be able to collect very much light. So if you're shooting at anything but optimal lighting situations, you're gonna have so much noise that you essentially negate any benefit that you might have gotten from shooting at 108 megapixels. But okay, enough picking on smartphones. What does this mean for professional video? Well, it highlights a fundamental trade-off that you need to be aware of when purchasing a camera system. At any given sensor size, the more pixels you add, the worse your light sensitivity will be, which will lead to reduced low light performance. But if you do have enough light, then adding more pixels will increase the resolution of your final image. Ultimately, there isn't one right answer. It just depends on what you need and what's important to you. For example, if we take a look at some of the manufacturers of the highest end cinema cameras on the market, RED and ARRI, we can see a very interesting ideological divide. RED tends to prefer higher resolution sensors. 6K is old news and 8K is the new standard. While over at ARRI, light sensitivity is higher priority. 
For example, their Super 35 cinema cameras have a resolution of just 7.4 megapixels, so that each pixel will be relatively large. If you're shopping for a camera, just keep in mind that more megapixels is not always a good thing, especially considering how in this day and age, sheer resolution is generally less important than other factors that go into making an image good. Anyways, my name is Cayman Crocker, signing off.